Stay free. See it first on Rumble. Gareth, we've got our wonderful guest joining us now. I'm very excited. Yep. Honoured, in fact, Certainly. to introduce uh, Satish Kumar, who, as well as being a, uh, a former monk, I wonder how you get out of the monk game, is it like <laughs> being a former gangster, a uh, lifelong uh, activist, he's a significant figure, and I have argued consistently that were there to be a global council of elders, or even, you know, don't have to be global, Satish Kumar would be on it. He's the founder of the Resurgence Trust, that's an educational charity that seeks to inform and inspire a just future for all. He's the editor of the charity's change-making magazine, Resurgence and Ecologist. Um, Satish Kumar entered first into public consciousness in 1962 when he walked 8,000 miles, a global pilgrimage, over two years. He started at Mahatma Gandhi's grave and walked to Moscow, Paris, London and the United States where he met Martin Luther King Jr. And I'm very proud to call him a teacher. Satish, thank you very much for joining us on Stay Free today. Thank you for having me, uh, Russell. Satish, you came to prominence in the 1960s where the countercultural movement genuinely seemed like it might change the world before it metastasized into kind of individualism and consumerism that is still morphing into a tyrannical force, uh, an entirely immersive force across our culture. During the 60s, when you came to prominence, people spoke openly about the desire for peace. In this time that appears to be defined by conflict of different kinds, most obviously, of course, literal war, do you feel that in a, when there is conflicts that are necessary for the military industrial complex, one of the most influential and powerful forces on this planet, while there is a war between Ukraine and Russia, when it feels like there are escalating tensions between the USA and China, that peace ought once again become part of our discourse? What are your thoughts on these conflicts that are, dis, that are determining and defining our planet right now, sir? Yes, um, a very good question. I'm very saddened to see war in Ukraine. And as you say, this uh, industrial military complex, uh, which is uh, kind of benefiting maybe, perhaps, but at the cost of hundreds of thousands of ordinary people suffering and destruction. So I think, um, uh, but politicians have forgotten how to be a statesman. The diplomats have forgotten how to practice diplomacy. And religious leaders, in all sides, uh, have forgotten how to practice religion and love. And this is why I've written this book, Radical Love. Radical love, Russell, is when you are able to love even those you don't like and you don't agree. And this is where I think uh, Putin and Biden and Rishi Sunak and Zelensky, they all need to read my book and practice radical love and sit down together, and I have a, a good solution for Ukraine situation. Well, would you tell us it, please? Because as you say, it's quite a terrible conflict. Terrible conflict, and it's benefiting not anybody. It's just, and it's leading towards possibly a third world war. Because, it's the, I mean, what happened? America could not win in Vietnam. America could not win in Afghanistan. Russia could not win in Afghanistan. Winning these days of war is impossible. So it will go on destroying and there's no win. So what my solution for Ukraine is being like Switzerland, Swiss model, where Switzerland did not go to First World War, did not go to Second World War, did not join NATO, did not join EU, independent, its own currency, its own system, and a very neutral and trading with everybody. So if uh, Ukraine can say to um, to Russia that there's no threat from you, uh, from uh, from us for you. There's no NATO. There's no EU. We are independent. We are neutral, like Switzerland. And Switzerland can be rich because they are neutral. And Switzerland can be home for everybody. International organizations is a UN headquarters and many many um, uh, World Council of Churches. Many international organizations go to Switzerland because it's neutral. So. Ukraine can be like Switzerland and be neutral and friend to Russia, friend to Europe, friend to everybody. Have no enemy. That is a solution. And I think Russia would like it. Russia would say, yes, if you are neutral and not a member of NATO and not a member of EU and independent, trading with everybody, that's welcome. It seems that eventually a solution of 
that type will have to be reached. Currently, what appears to be driving the conflict is the set of interests that are most obviously going to benefit from the reconstruction of Ukraine. Some of our investigations uh, and investigations of others, which we have curated uh, as part of our team, suggest that and it's publicly understood that BlackRock will be participating in the reconstruction of Ukraine, that Ukraine want to be 100% digital after this war. And, and, and assurances that Ukraine become could become a place of neutrality surely would make a difference, as well as providing, if they were anything like Switzerland, another potential venue for WEF to host their globalist uh, 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 events. The problem, Satish, is that it feels like, the in reality, the conflict between uh, Ukraine and Russia is about territorial and economic interests, not all of which are explicit. And there is an attempt to reduce these conflicts to simple moral stories of you know Russian criminality and Putin's evil. And Radical Love, I suppose, Radical Love, I, I mean, it's your book and you wrote it, but for me that suggests an acknowledgement ultimately of our fundamental humanism, of our fundamental shared goals, of our fundamental unity. But those ideas are not profitable. Yeah, but those ideas have to be made um, uh, at least popular, uh, if not profitable. And profitability is not the everything. Humanity is not just about money and profit. Humanity is about relationship, friendship, love, poetry, music, art, um, families, all the many, many other important things uh, which we need. And therefore, if we end this idea that Russians are our enemies, Chinese are our enemies, and, and the separation, we are one humanity. We live on one planet Earth. The whole cosmos is our country. The entire planet is our home. Nature is our nationality. And love is our religion. This is radical love. Love is our religion. Before we are Christians, Muslims, Hindus, we are, um, we are humans. And before we are Russians and Americans and Chinese, we are members of the planet Earth, one planet home. Unless you have this idea, this profitability, money, what has it led, led to us? Global warming, climate change, wars, conflict, poverty, homelessness, even in America. This profitability of America, number one economy, had not solved any human problems. So realists have failed utterly. Therefore, give idealists a chance. And I'm an idealist. And my radical love book is a book of idealism, but idealist is the uh, real realism is in idealism. These current conflicts, systems, methods, and modalities are, as you say, Satish, a denial of our fundamental spiritual nature. I would, exactly. I would agree. Uh, I have heard it said that it is ludicrous to apply these external labels and it becomes clear when looking at a baby that there is something ridiculous in saying that a baby is Chinese or French, that you might as well say this baby is a Tottenham supporter. <laughs> a baby doesn't have those attributes. A baby in its evident abundance and evident connection defies these external labels. But increasingly, we are governed in technological dictatorship, Satish. And I wonder what your concerns and thoughts are on the dehumanizing effect of automation, surveillance, and systems of control like social credit scores, which appear to be uh, increasingly discussed and more likely to be introduced in the next few years. You know, people are talking about artificial intelligence. I say to them that human intelligence is not used enough. We have so much potential to use human intelligence. Now they are saying that Farm will be farming will be done without farmers. Factories and workplaces will be run without workers. So uh, humans don't need to produce anything. They don't need to work. They need to just consume. People, humans don't need to think because artificial intelligence will think for you. So production will be made by factories. Thinking will be done by, uh, by um, artificial intelligence. What is the place of humans? Humans are irrelevant. Only place of humans is to consume. So we are no longer thinkers or activists. 
makers or artists. We are just consumers. And this is a nightmare, Russell. This is a nightmare. I would say technology should be in the service of humanity. Technology should be a tool to help humans, not replace humans, not replace human thinking, but aid human thinking. So technology as a servant of humanity is good. Technology as a master of humanity and replacing humanity is a disastrous and bad technology. So I want to challenge all the digital dictators that what are you doing is anti-human and anti-nature. It's very beautiful, and it reminds me of the analysis of the uh, ego, that the ego is a good servant, but a terrible master. That when the persona, the set of ideas with which we most strongly identify, dominate us, our lives become more materialistic, more wedded to transitory and uh, ultimately temporal things. It's interesting that you say that. Satish, how can we immediately access a new connection? What ought we do? Like, ultimately, this is what I'm mindful of, and this is what gives me most hope. When we talk about geopolitical ideas, powerful institutions, the march of globalism, corporatism, the military-industrial complex, the vast power of the, the technological state to spy on us and manipulate us, I sometimes feel a sense of despair. What can we do to reclaim our humanity today? What can we do to reclaim our connection to our own spirit right now? How do you practice this in your own life with a man who has an understanding of these traditions and has lived the these traditions in so they are not traditions they are living practical modalities what can we do right now sir no we have to build grassroots movement and and you are doing good work in that we have to say that ignore these the kind of big centralized uh, and technological uh, big organizations small is beautiful small and elegant and simple is beautiful so we should at the grassroots level people should come together and say we are going to live a human life technology as a servant but human life and we are going to take a hippocratic oath the hippocratic oath like doctor state do no harm do no harm to nature do no harm to other people and do no harm to yourself. If all of us practice that non-violent, peaceful way of living, uh, the Hippocratic Oath, then that uh, Hippocratic Oath is oath to lo loyalty to nature and loyalty to humanity rather than loyalty to business and money and profit and governments and military. Our loyalty has to shift at a grassroots level. So let us create a movement of the Hippocratic Oath, that everyone, you are businessman or woman or, or, a, a, or a politician or economist or a scientist, whoever you are, practice non-violence, practice the Hippocratic Oath, doing no harm. That is radical love. It's very hard though, Satish, to live like that. It's very hard to live only in love. But there is so much- great things are hard, Russell. <laughs> Climbing Mount Everest is hard. Going around the world for two and a half years, I went walking without any money for two and a half years through 15 countries and, 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 uh, and uh, 8,000 miles. That was hard, but that was a real experience. So let's not worry about hardness. What is good, we must practice even if it is hard. And, and, and we will overcome our difficulties. For Martin Luther King, who I met, went to prison for 29 times in his 10 years activism. Nelson Mandela was in jail for 27 years. Mahatma Gandhi was in prison for 12 years. So they were hardworking, uh, great visionaries. So we don't need to worry about hardness and difficulty. We have to do what is the right thing to do, even though we have to sacrifice um, our some comfort. But in the interest of humanity and planet, we have to do build a grassroots movement. It'd been no good if Gandhi had said, this is too hard going on this sort march. It would have been no good if Martin Luther King had said, I can't do this million man march. It's too difficult. If Malcolm X had said, standing up to the dominator culture is too difficult. If Nelson Mandela had said, I can't stay in this prison. It's too hard. I'll do whatever you want. What do I need to say? You're right. We like This is, I suppose, one of the challenges when you lose your connection to spirituality, which involves things like sacrifice, 
discipline, exactly. focus, when yeah. everything becomes tethered to the external, when all of our personal validation, verification is externally sourced, we don't have the cojones no more. We don't yeah. have the spiritual stones, the minerals to sort of go, exactly. right, I'm going to suffer now. I'm ready to suffer. I don't like suffering, Satish. It's difficult, but I will do it now that you have commanded it on our show. <laughs> I think suffering will make us strong and resilient. If you take a tree, a tree stands in the winter, in the snow, in the storm, out in the field as a stronger. If you keep a tree in a greenhouse uh, or, or in a conservatory all the time, this tree will not be strong. So resilience comes when we suffer and we make sacrifice. And I have suffered and made sacrifice in my life, and I am uh, much more strong for that. So I would not worry about hardship. What is the right thing to do? We should do it. And radical love, it's all about that. We, when we practice radical love, then we are prepared to sacrifice because we depend on each other. We love not, we become lovers. We don't want to have lovers, but we become lovers. And, we are, and loving is hard. Loving you is want hard. to be loved. You want somebody to love you, but you don't want to love. Uh, loving is hard. In loving, you have to sacrifice your ego. So we have to move from ego to eco. Change one, one letter from G to C. Ego to eco. And then you will become a lover. And that's a radical love. I love you, Satish Kumar. You're a very beautiful man. Thank you for your time. Satish's book, Radical Love, is available now. There's a link in the description so you can get it. Satish, I want you to come to community this year in the middle of July, our live festival with Wim Hof, with Vandana Shiva, so people can come together and practice and live these ideas. If you want to join me, I'll be there. You should see me. I'm around all everyone like Willy Wonka. I'm on it. Come there. Satish, yeah. will you come? Will you be free, do you think, to come and join us? Yes, I would love to come. Yes, yes. I will look in my diary, but I think I am free and I would love to come. That sounds like an excuse. Let us, let us have a, a change one letter of the word diary and it's dairy. And down the dairy, you've got to do what I say. Okay, okay. <laughs> I will do what you say. I love you, Russell. And this is a radical love. I radical love you too. Satish yeah. Kumar. And, and the you. radical love is to love without expectations, oh, right. without criticism, without a kind of complaining, without expectation. Drop to get out, all come expectations. Into community. <laughs> Drop all expectations and love. And then through participation, you change Ukraine and wars and all these things, confrontation. You can change that by love. Putin has to be loved. Only through love you can transform Putin. Only through love you can transform Biden. I know you're right. I know you're right. I know that if Gandhi, Malcolm X, Martin Luther King, if they were around, they'd be like, we're going there. We're, we'll sort it out. We're, we're going to yes. cuddle that. We'll cuddle some sense into him. We'll cuddle yes. some yes. sense into a lot of them. One of his own yeah. old phones. Yeah, call him up on one of his old little Putin yellow phones. Satish, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for your time. We will speak again soon. I'd My love to... pleasure. My pleasure. Thank you for having me. Thank you, sir. I love you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Satish Kumar there, potential guest for Community, our annual festival where we come together to realise these things. I... Yeah, you I think mean, the he bit was? where he said, when you love people, you don't have any <laughs> expectations. I think what he was saying is, I ain't coming. I'm not definitely time. coming. This, you can't tie me down. No. So trying to make the interview up. go well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just don't want a bad vibe in the interview. It was lovely though, wasn't it? Really nice. Stay free. See it first on Rumble.